The other day I put out part 5 of this series. I did not have time to go into much detail about the significance of gold lease rates, and more specifically negative gold lease rates, so here's part 5b. I'm going to start out with what most people care about when they talk about the merits of owning gold. You and I know that there is much more to gold than its dollar price, but let's start the discussion here because I want to use this to reiterate a key message about the relationship between do the dollar and gold. And by the way, let me also state right now that I'm misusing the term dollar. What I'm really referring to here is the U.S. Federal Reserve note, which is quite different from a constitutional dollar, but I digress. So what we can see in this chart is that during the 1990s, the price of gold in dollars declined quite a bit. From 2001 and onward, the price of gold in dollars rose. This way of looking at things actually puts the cart before the horse. It is not the dollar that gives gold its value, but gold that gives the dollar its value, as should have become clear in the earlier videos in this series. So the period of time in the 1990s was a period of time when the dollar was strengthening against gold, and the period of time after 2001 was a period of time when the dollar was weakening against gold. Sure, there was a period of time from late 2011 to late 2015 where the dollar strengthened against gold, but I view this more as a time when some of the speculative interest in gold was being shaken out. There were people who bought gold simply because they saw a positive price trend leading up to the year 2011, and they owned gold for the wrong reasons. So now that we've gone over that, let's take a look at gold lease rates over this time period. Going back to the chart of the gold forward rate plotted against LIBOR, we can see that prior to the year 2001, gold, gold lease rates, which is simply LIBOR minus GOFO, uh, were quite healthy at 1-3%. to During this period of time, gold owners found it quite attractive to lend their gold for dollars so that they could obtain a rate of return on their gold. After the year 2001, lease rates on gold collapsed to less than 1% and for most of the period well under even half a percent. So this is a period of time, and I think most reasonable people would have a hard time arguing with this, that gold owners were less incentivized to lend their gold out. Is it mere coincidence that we saw the dollar strengthening against gold during the period of time when the rate of return on lent gold was attractive, and that the dollar weakened against gold when there was little incentive to lend the gold? My argument is that no, this is not a coincidence. And so what are we to make of this? If a gold lease rate of 1-3% to is enough to entice gold to bid for dollars, and a gold lease rate that is 0-1% to disincentivizes the gold owner to lend out gold, what does a strongly negative lease rate mean? This is a very important question to consider. Let's first go back and talk about the process of lending gold and how it works. Then we'll discuss what a negative gold lease rate would suggest that people do. Here's a simple diagram that explains the steps of lending gold to generate a rate of return. It starts with the gold owner selling the gold at current spot price in order to obtain dollars. This is essentially gold bidding for dollars. Step two is to enter into a contract for the return of gold. Technically, this contract doesn't need to be with the same person who bought the gold in step one, but it can be. Regardless, these two steps are referred to as lending gold. The third step, then, is to lend the dollars at interest. If the dollar rate of interest is high enough, then it will compensate for the difference between the spot gold price and the uh, gold lender will receive an adequate rate of return. Now, it's worth mentioning here that the rate of return on this gold is invariably lower than the rate of return on a dollar loan, and this is what makes lending gold to generate a return possible. And this is no small point. It is in general true that riskier investments require higher rates of return. Is the fact that dollar interest rates are higher than gold interest rates significant? Absolutely. Think about that long and hard, and it will tell you something about where gold sits on the pyramid of money. Hint, hint. Do a little research on John Exeter. So let's now discuss what might happen in a negative gold lease rate environment. In a negative lease rate environment, the owner of gold is not only not compensated for lending gold, 
but will be punished for doing so. The negative gold lease rate suggests an economic incentive to do something completely different. In this environment, one can see profiting from gold in a very different way. First, one should seek to borrow as many dollars as possible at the current dollar interest rate. The next step is to buy gold at spot and put it in a vault somewhere where storage costs are low. The third step is to go short a forward contract or futures contract. At the end of the term, a person simply washes, rinses, and repeats. Let's put some numbers to this process as an example. Currently, banks are lending to each other for three months at 0.47%. This is not the interest rate that you and I get. This is just the interest rate available from one bank to another. If such a loan can be obtained, then the next step is to put it to work. Spot gold is currently $1,705 at the ask. And it's important here to note that we have to buy at the ask price, not at the lower bid price. There's currently a $5 differential between bid and ask, which is actually quite high at the moment. Finally, we go short a future. The bid price on August 2020 futures contracts on the COMEX, which expire in 110 days, is $1,727 per ounce. So if we can execute this operation and continue to roll over with the same rates of return, we will generate a 4.3% annualized rate of return for storing gold and offering it at a future date. The cost of obtaining the cash is a little less than half a percent per year. So the gold hoarder will earn slightly less than a 4% rate of return on this process. And this return is available from just making gold go into hiding and offering it at some point in the future. Is this an easy thing for you and I to do? No. But I'm guessing some of the paper gold products have disclaimers in their prospectuses that may allow them to do this. And they don't even need to borrow the funds to do it. Their investors provide the funds. But back to what this might mean. It appears that the motivations have moved away from lending gold to one of quite the opposite nature. I don't know if the current negative gold lease rates will persist. But if they do, then I believe that the person who stores his or her wealth in gold instead of in dollars, will be much better off. Pick your money wisely, folks. The other day I put out part five of this series.